Damn, nature, you scary. This world is not a very peaceful place. There's destruction and violence everywhere you look. Even nature gets angry sometimes. Natural phenomenon can be violent events that are outside the control of humans. They are caused by the forces of nature and may result in loss of life, injury, and damage to property. There are many types of natural phenomena, and here are the most striking ones. From the tornado that came from the pits of hell, to the most elusive and beautiful lighting in the world, here are 20 times Mother Nature got angry on camera. Lightning Strike Lightning strikes are as beautiful as they are terrifying. They are Mother Nature's sniper. But how do they come to be, exactly? Lightning is an electrical discharge caused by imbalances between storm clouds and the ground. During a storm, colliding particles of rain, ice, or snow that exist inside a cloud increase the imbalance between the cloud and the ground, which means that objects in the ground, like trees, steeples, and also the Earth itself, become highly positively charged, and that creates an imbalance that nature seeks to correct by passing current between the two charges. And they're extremely hot, too. A flash can heat the air around it to temperatures five times hotter than the surface of the sun. So, yeah, no human being could ever survive such a thing. And actually, the roar that usually follows a lightning bolt comes from that. When the air gets super hot, it also rapidly expands and vibrates, which creates the terrifying, peeling thunder that we all know too well. Did you know that about 100 lightning bolts strike the Earth's surface every single second? Which makes them quite a common phenomenon. About 2,000 people are killed by lightning worldwide each year. Hundreds more survive, but they usually have everlasting symptoms that are not easy to live with. Some of them experience severe memory loss, dizziness, weakness, and even numbness. Wildfire Wildfires are exactly what the name suggests. They are unwanted, unplanned, and incredibly uncontrollable fires that occur in areas of combustible vegetation, which means places like forests. Wildfires usually start either in rural areas or in urban areas, and then the vegetation around it catches on fire and it spreads incredibly fast. Actually, scientists and researchers have been studying fossil charcoal, and they came to the conclusion that wildfires started soon after the first appearance of terrestrial plants some 420 million years ago. Cool, huh? Earth is an intrinsically flammable planet due to its carbon-rich vegetation, seasonally dry climates, atmospheric oxygen, and widespread volcanic ignitions and lightning. All the ingredients are there to provoke wildfires all over the planet. The occurrence of wildfires throughout the Earth's history probably had deep evolutionary effects on most ecosystems' flora and fauna. In other words, wildfires are extremely destructive and scary, but without them, our planet and our species would probably look very different today. Lightning strikes ignite approximately 60% of all naturally caused wildfires, but the human species causes a lot of them too, either by accident or willingly. Human-caused wildfires can destroy property and can be very damaging to human life as well. On the other hand, naturally-caused wildfires may have a very beneficial effect on native vegetation, animals, and ecosystems that have evolved with fire. Tsunamis Tsunamis are the most extreme natural disaster involving water in the world. A single tsunami can cause widespread destruction when they crash ashore, destroying entire coastlines and many cities in a matter of hours. It's a real aquatic monster that eats everything in its way, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. The only thing we can do is run to higher ground and watch our entire community being swept away by the violent torrent of water. These destructive and insanely powerful surges of water are typically caused by undersea earthquakes at tectonic plate boundaries. Scary, right? But tsunamis can also be caused by underwater landslides or volcanic eruptions. And in Earth's ancient past, they were frequently launched by the impact of a large meteorite plunging into the ocean. Just imagine how terrifying that must have been. 
Luckily, nothing of the sort will happen in our lifetimes. Tsunamis can race across the sea at up to 500 miles an hour, which is about as fast as a jet airplane. At that incredible pace, they can actually cross the entire expanse of the Pacific Ocean, the largest on Earth, in less than a day. And the fact that they have very long wavelengths also means that they lose very little energy along the way. They are one of the scariest and most destructive natural phenomena known to man so far. Massive Flood Floods are hands down horrific. They are a massive overflow of water onto land that is typically dry. And the worst part is they can literally happen anywhere in the world. Some of them are mild, meaning they can cover up an area with just a few inches of water, but others can bring enough water to cover the roofs of the houses of an entire town or city. Needless to say, massive floods can be extremely dangerous and destructive for communities. Some floods can last for days, weeks, and even longer. But what causes them exactly? Well, there are many different situations that can cause a flood. Very heavy rainfall can easily cause a flood. An ocean wave coming on shore like a storm surge can also cause one. And in the colder climate areas, well, they're usually caused by the melting of snow and ice, as well as ice jams. But as much as they can happen anywhere, some areas are more vulnerable to floods, like areas near a river, for instance, or urban areas as well, because rooftops funnel rainfall to the ground, and the surfaces below are usually paved and therefore they cannot absorb the excess of water, and it simply just accumulates there. European Heat Waves of 2003 was one of the deadliest ones. At the time, it was the hottest summer on record in Europe since at least the year 1540. The country that was hit the worst was France. The heat wave led to health crises in several countries and combined with drought to create a crop shortfall in parts of southern Europe. In 2019, Europe experienced two distinct heat waves one summer, one in late June and the other in late July. France experienced whopping temperatures of 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Thousands of animals also perished as ventilation systems in barns were overwhelmed all across the continent. The European death toll is calculated to be more than 70,000, but that number is difficult to assess, which means it could have been higher. The heat waves are partly a result of the Western European seasonal lag from the maritime influence of the Atlantic warm waters in combination with hot continental air and strong southerly winds. So if you're planning on visiting Europe, try to avoid the deadly summer months. Hailstorm Hailstorms can be extremely deadly and destructive. Just imagine how your town would look after ice spheres the size of baseballs came plummeting down from the sky. They form at high altitudes inside massive clouds when supercooled water droplets adhere to one another, forming layers of ice that then drop onto the Earth's surface at approximately 106 miles per hour. Hailstorms are actually an unusual weather phenomenon because several conditions are required in the atmosphere in order for them to occur. A rare type of cloud called cumulonimbus needs to be present at a highly developed form. Cumulonimbus are massively gigantic mushroom-shaped clouds that can be seen during thunderstorms. They can reach whopping heights of up to 65,000 feet. There must also be a very strong current of air traveling upwards through these clouds, commonly known as updrafts. That's how the water within the clouds becomes ice. The largest hailstone ever found in the United States was 8 inches in diameter and 18.5 inches in circumference. It was found in 2010 and it weighed approximately 2 pounds. Hailstones can cause extreme damage to buildings, vehicles, and crops. In the 18th century in Europe, people tried to prevent hail by firing cannons into the clouds. Yeah, needless to say, that didn't really work. Dust Devil Dust devils are comparable to tornadoes because they are both a violent weather phenomenon that involves a vertically oriented rotating column of wind. Dust devils are extremely strong and also mind-blowingly huge. Some can be as much as 10 meters wide and more than a thousand meters high. Thankfully, they tend to be quite short-lived, but in the moments they do occur, a lot of destruction can ensue. They form on strong updrafts in dry convection. The rotating column of air occurs due to the rapid heating of a small part of the Earth's surface. The difference in temperature between the warm air at the surface and the cooler air just above it creates a shallow layer of instability. When the two air masses converge, they cause the pressure at the surface to decrease. 
The warm and cool air masses then begin to rotate, creating a whirlwind. They become visible because of the type of dust, sand, or soil that gets sucked into the column of air. They've been known to destroy houses, trees, small aircraft, and other types of vehicles. On the enhanced Fujita scale, they can sometimes classify as EF0 or EF1, which basically calculates the damage that tornadoes and whirlwinds cause. Hurricanes Hurricanes are massively destructive and messy. If you've ever had the misfortune of seeing one, you know what I mean. They can rip off rooftops of houses like it's nothing and pick up an eight-wheeler right off the ground as if it were made out of feathers. Hurricanes are a type of storm that's called a tropical cyclone, and they form over tropical or subtropical waters in the Atlantic Ocean with wind speeds of at least 74 miles per hour. Hurricanes have three main parts, the calm eye in the center, the eyeball where basically all the violent and destructive things happen such as wind and torrential rain, and finally we have the rain bands that spin out from the center and that determine the size of the storm. Hurricanes are categorized with the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which goes from 1 to 5, 5 being the strongest. To put things into perspective, a Category 5 hurricane has wind speeds of at least 157 miles an hour, which is a lot. Hurricanes usually hit more often in coastal areas as they form over the ocean. The Galveston hurricane of 1900 remains the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history. The storm left between 6,000 and 12,000 fatalities. Mamatus Clouds These clouds are absolutely gorgeous or terrifying, depending on how you look at it. They are pouch-like protrusions that hang from the undersides of clouds just like gigantic cocoons in the sky. They are composed primarily of ice, and they are formed usually from thunderstorm anvils clouds, but they can be seen hanging from other types of clouds as well, just not as commonly. They are terrifying because people associate them with severe weather, which is never a good thing, and that's because they appear around, before, or after a usually very angry storm. Some people also think that they continue extending downward from tornadoes, which is actually not true, that's just an urban myth. But they are nonetheless very interesting, because they are partially formed by sinking air. and most clouds are, on the contrary, formed by rising air. But all of that aside, it is undeniable that Mamatus clouds appear quite ominous. But when the sunset's orange light hits them just right, they make for very unique and breathtakingly beautiful natural phenomena. Mamatus have also been observed to form on the underside of volcanic ash clouds. So, as you can see, every time that these clouds appear in the sky, it's quite normal that people are afraid of them, because it means that something very powerful is coming their way. Landslide Landslides are hands down terrifying. Imagine walking around one day minding your own business and suddenly seeing the ground under your feet simply breaking apart and catapulting you toward certain death. These things can eat up entire towns just like that. But what are they exactly, and how do they happen? Well, a landslide is defined as the movement of a mass of rock, earth, or debris down a slope. They can either be tiny or mind-blowingly colossal. They can be classified in five different types. Falls, topples, slides, spreads, and flows. And as to what causes them, each landslide is caused by a plethora of things happening at the same time, but in the wrong way. In other words, they are caused by disturbances in the natural stability of a slope. They can accompany heavy rains or follow droughts, earthquakes, or volcanic eruptions. The largest one to have ever occurred formed an 837-foot-high landslide dam on the Min River in China. This landslide killed all but one of the 577 people in the town of Daishi. The dam then overflowed, causing a flood and 2,500 additional deaths. Tornado Tornadoes are basically a mobile and destructive vortex of violently rotating winds that happen to have the appearance of a funnel-shaped cloud. They usually advance with and beneath a large storm system. 
The deadliest tornado in world history was the Dalatpur Satoriya tornado in Bangladesh on April 26, 1989, which killed approximately 1,300 people. It was considered an F5 on the Fujita scale, which is a scale used for rating tornadoes. It only goes up to F5, and even if a tornado had F6 level winds near ground level, which is extremely unlikely, if not hands down impossible, it would only be rated F5. Some areas of the United States are a hotbed for tornadoes. Mississippi, Texas, Alabama, Georgia, and Illinois topped the list as the top five worst states for tornadoes. These states recorded the most tornadic activity in 2020, ranging from 127 in Mississippi to 71 in Illinois, as confirmed by the National Weather Service. Most tornadoes have winds of speeds of less than 110 miles per hour and are about 250 feet across. Once they've touched ground, they can travel several miles miles before they dissipate, which makes them very dangerous. Huge Waves Huge waves and raging seas are a phobia for a lot of people, and you really can't blame them. When the ocean is angry, nobody is safe. Waves are created by energy passing through water, causing it to move in a circular motion. That energy is usually the wind. Wind-driven waves, or surface waves, are created by the friction between wind and surface water. As wind blows across the surface of the ocean, the continuous disturbance creates a wave crest. These types of waves are found globally across the open ocean and along the coast. Some of them are harmless and tiny, but from time to time, you get some waves that are absolutely monstrous. The tallest waves in the world occur in Nazaré, Portugal, where in 2012, the Guinness World Records organization gave its confirmation regarding a record wave with a height of 78 feet. That was the largest wave in the world to have been surfed. But the largest wave ever recorded was, in fact, 1,720 feet. It occurred on the 9th of July, 1958, when an earthquake along the Fairweather Fault in the Alaska Panhandle released about 40 million cubic yards of rock high above the northeastern shore of Latoya Bay. When all that debris fell into the ocean, it triggered the most monstrous wave that humankind has ever seen. Volcano Think of a volcano as an opening, or maybe a vent, from where lava and steam can erupt on our planet's surface. Actually, that is why volcanoes look like mountains, because of the accumulation over time of erupted lava. Kind of like when you leave a candlestick lit on a candle holder. The liquid wax will trickle down like a river until it cools down again, making a mountain-like shape. Most of the world's volcanoes are found around the edges of tectonic plates, both on land and in the oceans. On land, volcanoes form when one tectonic plate moves under another. But did you know that there are also volcanoes in the ocean? Well, it's true. Volcanoes can erupt through cracks open in the ocean floor by the spreading of two plates, which is called a mid-oceanic ridge. That way, magma can rise up through to fill said cracks. Once the lava is cooled down by being exposed to the ocean water, it forms a new crust on the edges of the cracks, thus forming underwater volcanoes. These mid-ocean ridges have been active for so long that today they actually form a very long chain of underwater volcanoes that circle the planet, just like the seams on a baseball. Meteoroid Apart from the asteroid that wiped out the entire dinosaur population from planet Earth, we have never seen a severe asteroid landing in recorded history. But meteoroids happen all the time. In fact, an estimated 25 million meteoroids enter the Earth's atmosphere each day, which results in an estimated 15,000 tons of extraterrestrial material entering the atmosphere each year. Cool, huh? A meteoroid is basically just a lump of rock or metal that orbits the Sun just like the Earth. They are nowhere near the size of an asteroid. They are much, much smaller. They're actually fragments of dust and gravel from comets and asteroids. But they still come from outer space at a mind-blowing velocity. When a meteoroid, comet, or asteroid enters the Earth's atmosphere, it's typically at a speed in excess of 45,000 miles per hour. So how come most of them land in Russia? Well, that's because Siberia is just really, really big. Much of the meteoroid gets singed into fine dust, but the tougher stuff, mostly rock asteroid material occasionally makes it to the ground as a meteorite. Like the Chelyabinsk meteor that occurred on the 15th of February in 2013, which is thought to be the biggest natural space object to enter the Earth's atmosphere since 1908. It was 56 feet in diameter and weighed approximately 10,000 metric tons. 
Morning Glory Cloud Imagine a giant snake made out of clouds crossing the sky. That is exactly what the morning glory cloud looks like. The only place in the world where they are a recurrent occurrence is the Gulf of Carpentaria in Northern Australia, and they appear mostly during September and October. It isn't the only place on Earth where they occur, but it is the only place where they can be forecast, so now you know when to go and catch one. They are one of the most spectacular cloud formations known to mankind. The giant serpent in the sky can roll onto it itself and it stretches as far as the eye can see, sometimes for hundreds of kilometers. And they're quite fast as well. Moving at 35 kilometers per hour towards you, it can be a little intimidating. And sometimes there can be multiple cylindrical waves at once. They've become a famous destination for pilots that want to surf the wave in the sky. Photographers also travel to Carpentaria every year to capture the absolute beauty of the morning glory clouds. Despite looking quite intimidating, morning glory clouds are absolutely harmless, but they remain a very misunderstood phenomena because of its rarity, which means it has little significance in terms of rainfall and climate. Lightning Sprites Sprites are large-scale electric discharges that occur high above thunderstorm clouds. They are associated with thunderstorms, but they are not born in the same clouds that send us rain. Sprites are often triggered by a strong, positive bolt of ordinary lightning near the ground. And they are not easy to capture on film. These beautiful, natural phenomena occur in the Earth's mesosphere, which is 50 miles up into the sky. They look like maybe an army of UFOs is trying to invade the world. They're basically lightning's stranger cousins. The flashes last just tenths of a second and can be hard to see from the ground since they're generally obscured by thunderstorm clouds. The ones that we do manage to see are usually bright red or deep electric blue. These colors are caused by the excitation of molecular nitrogen. The word sprite is derived from the Latin spiritus, which translates to spirit. A funny fact about sprites is that for over a century, like stories of rain of toads, they were dismissed as fiction or folklore. Rare visual reports of sprites go back to at least 1886. Even when a Nobel Prize-winning physicist described them, the scientific community ignored the events. Then, in 1989, something awesome happened. The scientists from the University of Minnesota actually caught them on film. Since then, they've been captured in photographs and videos so many times, it is impossible to deny their existence anymore. Fire NATO. This is exactly what it sounds like, a fire tornado. Yeah, I know, terrifying. They form when wildfires get too intense. So intense, in fact, that the heat from the fire can generate its own weather patterns. During the 2003 Canberra bushfires in Canberra, Australia, a violent fire whirl was documented. It was calculated to have horizontal winds of 160 miles per hour and vertical air speeds of 93 miles per hour, causing the flashover of 300 acres in 0.04 seconds. Despite being absolutely horrific, fire whirls can't be classified as tornadoes because usually they don't extend from the surface of the earth to the base of the cloud because, you know, they're made of fire. Just just imagine how terrifying it will be to see a gigantic vortex of fire coming at you. If you didn't believe in the devil before that, you would after. One of these bad boys can reach temperatures of 1,090 degrees Celsius. Fire whirls can uproot trees that are 49 feet tall or more. They can also aid the spotting ability of wildfires to propagate and start new fires as they lift burning materials such as tree bark. These burning bits can be blown away from the fire ground by the stronger winds aloft, which makes them insanely dangerous and destructive. Water Spout Imagine a tornado, but instead of it landing on land, it lands on water. Water spouts are, in other words, a very intense columnar vortex that usually happens over a large body of water. They're always connected to a cloud, but in general, they do not suck up the water. They are considered as non-supercell tornadoes over water. They are usually quite small and weak. It's just a little column of air rotating. More often than not, they're a lot weaker than their land counterparts, although stronger water spouts can occur when they are spawned by a mesocyclone. They look very terrifying, but in reality, they're not really a 
threat at all. But for those who don't know what they are, they can inspire fear, especially if they're formed near the coast, for example. In this video, you can see that the sky is very blue and it's a gorgeous day, but there in the middle of the horizon, there's this threatening looking dark gray cloud tornado moving around completely unpredictably. It can be a little impressive, to be honest. That is so cool. If they get momentum, water spouts can easily flip sailboats, so whatever you do, don't swim towards them. They usually form in tropical areas, but in winter, you can have a snow devil or an ice spout. There are also extremely rare water spouts that form onto the base of a snow squall. As you can see, nature is very creative and sometimes a little hardcore, to say the least. Have you ever witnessed any of the natural phenomena listed in this video? Tell us about it in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.